As dawn rises on July the 2nd in the year 626 AD, Li Shumin, the Prince of Qin, is lying in ambush outside Xuan Wu Gate. Accompanying him are his most capable military officers, and they will soon commit an act that will shock the country. Li Shumin, now 27 years old, rides to the head of his troops. He has mixed feelings about what he's about to do. He knows that the moment he has waited for for so long is about to arrive after a protracted build-up. There was also a long period of hesitation. To take advantage of this opportunity, he has to do something awful, something that he alone can do. There have been countless power struggles in imperial families in Chinese history, and the young prince is about to write the ending to another such story. Now, no one can help him escape his destiny, and is very aware that it's inevitable. At dawn, the victor will become the next emperor of the Tang Dynasty. The loser will die. July the 1st, 626 AD, the ninth year of Wu De in the Tang Dynasty. That morning's court assembly would not be routine. The Yuan Emperor Gaozu of the Tang Dynasty issues an edict to send troops to fight the Turks besieging Wu Chang. The government and military officers at court were shocked that the emperor was entrusting the prince of Qi, Li Yuanji, to lead the troops into battle. They were astonished that the prince of Qin, Li Shumin, a proven military leader, was passed over for the task. Moreover, the edict specifically ordered that the top military officers in Li Shumin's residence must follow Li Yuanji, the prince of Qi, into battle. The edict effectively stripped Li Shumin of his military authority by removing the officers from his command. This was disastrous for Li Shumin's political capital and strength. Crown Prince Li Jiancheng was surprised that Li Shumin remained calm beside him at court. It would seem more normal for Li Shumin to react somehow when faced with an edict that could lead to his downfall. Li Shumin, with his sharp political acumen, should have opposed the plan in some way. Nevertheless, he kept silent and motionless. Meanwhile, the planet Venus had appeared in the daytime sky three days in a row highly unusual occurrence. It seemed to portend a major change in the Tang Dynasty. At the calm center of this whirlpool was Li Shumin, acting as though nothing was out of the ordinary.
Li Shumin was then 27 years old. As the second son of Emperor Gaozu's first wife, he had successfully led military expeditions in the early years of the Tang Dynasty. It could even be said that he contributed significantly to unifying the country. But unlike what most people might have imagined, this young man, who would later be known as the Emperor for All Ages, kept a very low profile in his youth. Li in the year 617 AD, Li Yuan proclaimed at Taiyuan that he was raising an army. The following year, the Tang Dynasty was formally established at Chang'an. As the oldest son of the first wife, Li Jiancheng was appointed crown prince and he spent most of his time in the capital attending to political matters. Meanwhile, Li Shimin, who had always enjoyed riding and hunting, began leading troops on frequent military campaigns. At first, this division of labor seemed reasonable and beneficial. But Li Shimin's military successes gradually became a special threat to the still developing regime. The two books of the 唐太宗啊，这个人从小就很有绝杀的能力，就是很果断，性格很刚毅，啊，这个有这个拍板的能力很强，这为他后来成长成一个独立的政治领袖，其实奠定了很好的人格基础。For Li Yuan, his competitive son was already a man. It seemed unlikely that Li Shimin who'd always been in the shadow of his father, would always yield to his elder brother. Li Shimin's desire, he is the leader of the Qin Wang, 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 the leader of the Qin Wang. He thought that this can also be understood. He took the Qin Wang, 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 所以的人都有很大的牺牲秦王府对这个国家做出的贡献是最大的他们这个战斗牺牲很严重但是呢因为一朝君子一朝臣秦王不是太子未来的天下就不是秦王府所以这些人虽然为国家做出了很大的牺
当然将在外，军民有所不受。如果是主帅想要干掉哪一个将领的话，这是易如反掌的事情。如果他们在战场不再决定追随他的话，很可能就要被他呃屠杀掉了。这是一个针对他的非常非常可怕的一个局面。乃圣上旨意，汝等敢抗旨乎？退下。This was an extremely difficult predicament for Li Shimin. The edict was from his father. And as the son of the emperor, he had no grounds for not complying. This was clearly not something that he could tell his people at that moment. Thank you. 那他们又不甘心失败，那怎么办呢？唯一的办法就是发动军事政变。At dusk that day, Tang Emperor Li Yuan summoned his six key ministers. Meanwhile, the planet Venus continued to appear high in the sky, and this was believed to signal an impending change of ruler. Li Yuan, founder of the Tang Dynasty, knew at least that much about astronomy, and by tradition, an emperor should publicly admit his faults in response to this omen. So, now 60 years old, Li Yuan sought advice from his ministers. After a long discussion, the emperor and his ministers still failed to reach a conclusion. We, today, people, are probably think that he is a crazy man, right? But in the ancient times, it was not so. This is a serious problem because people think that the sky and the earth are mutually connected. If there is such a sky, 甚至太史局这些专家们给出了这样的报告，皇帝不能不认真对待。As discussions between Li Yuan and his six key ministers continued without any resolution, the report arrived from Imperial astronomer Fu Yi. As the greatest authority on astronomy in the early years of the Tang Dynasty, his conclusion would carry a lot of weight. Farmer meant that the Prince of Qin would rule everything under the sun. 
the imperial astronomer clearly stated that the appearance of Venus portended a change of ruler. The prince of Qin, Li Shimin, would rule over the entire territory of the Tang. As a living emperor, Li Yuan clearly didn't like to hear that his own son was going to usurp the throne. In his rage, Li Yuan summoned Li Shimin to the palace to explain the matter. So History doesn't record Li Yuan's activities or state of mind before Li Shimin's arrival at the palace, but it's likely that Li Yuan, now in his 60s, was tormented by his thoughts while he was waiting. Only eight years had passed since Li Yuan became emperor. He had worked hard for most of his life to achieve this accomplishment. He was well aware that one day his son would take his place. He would certainly never have imagined, however, that he would live to see that day. Moreover, while there could only be one emperor, he had more than one son. The scene was thus set for the victor and the victim to play their parts. But some of them were completely unaware of what was coming. Li Yuan, in a state of extreme apprehension, waited for his son. Meanwhile, another important meeting was secretly taking place in the residence of Li Shimin. All of Li Shimin's trusted government and military officials were seated in front of him. The detailed description of this meeting in historical records attests to its significance. Secrecy was so important that Feng Xuanling and Du Ruhui had to attend disguised as Taoist priests. While this was a long meeting, there was no resolution. And in the end, they resorted to a practice known as divination. At this crucial moment, Li Shimin's aide Zhang Gongjin rushed in, threw down the divination implements and said, Divination is for resolving doubts, but there is none here. So why do we need divination? This finally prompted Li to make a decision. His <laughs> plan but Faced with this perilous situation, Li Xiaomin eventually made a shocking decision. What he decided was so horrific 
that could not be put in words in any historical source. Two blood brothers found themselves in a situation where only one could live. Because neither could predict what the other might do, neither knew how the victor would treat the defeated and his family. The surest way to avoid this fate was to act first. This was the situation for the emperor's two sons, Li Jiancheng and Li Shiming. Shiranya the decision had been made to assassinate the crown prince and control his father, the emperor. But the military strength of his brothers was far greater than what was available to Li Shimin. Taking them both by surprise at one time seemed impossible, since neither left their residence very often. While Li Shimin was focused on how to deal with his brothers, his father suddenly created an even bigger problem that shortened Li Shimin's window of opportunity. The Emperor Li Yuan passed the Imperial Astronomer's interpretation directly on to Li Shimin. He was clearly asking for an explanation. Li Shimin was in a precarious situation. It looked as though he would have to show his hand to his father, the current Emperor, before he even dealt with his brothers. Li 从直接意义上讲，这个太白入侵分这个天象，直接导致了像我们这边的爆发。At this crucial moment, the unforeseen crisis created all-out panic among Li Shimin's subordinates. These followers, who had overcome countless dangers under Li Shimin in the past, were now quaking in their boots at what the emperor might do. But Li Shimin, totally unaffected by the panic around him, was smiling. He seemed to be thinking of how he was going to change his destiny. As night fell, a blanket of silence enveloped the land as usual, 
enforced by the Tang Dynasty curfew. But after the events of this very long day, the Emperor and his son deep within the palace were too angry and afraid to sleep. Li Yuan didn't know what to do about his tearful son. He really wasn't sure which of his sons was still loyal to him. As his father was pondering this matter, Li Shumin suddenly dropped a bombshell that completely disrupted Li Yuan's train of thought. Tang 并不一定说就是李健成和李元吉和平飞的关系好Li Yuan was surprised at Li Shimin's accusation against the Crown Prince. While waiting for a reply, Li Yuan may have considered many scenarios revolving around his son, the military hero, and the omen of Venus. What he could never have imagined, however, was that Li Shimin did not explain the astronomical phenomenon, but instead, reported that the Crown Prince was having illicit relations with the harem. The Crown Prince's illicit relations with the harem would have been an unspeakable scandal in any dynasty. If news of the scandal got out of the palace, it would become a joke for generations to come. Li Yuan momentarily forgot about the astronomical sign as his focus shifted to the possible scandal in the harem. A private conversation between father and son concerning an astronomical event unexpectedly shifted to a very different topic. Yuan 
。明日朕就亲自审问此事，你应该及早前来告诉朕。是，父皇，儿臣告退。李世民 departed feeling happy that his father was so enraged. Crown Prince Li Jiancheng, with no connection to the astronomical event, was now implicated in a much larger scandal. For the aging emperor, the day's events had been just too much. He needed time to think things over. He never imagined that he'd just made a fatal error. In accordance with the Emperor's decision, the meeting between the Crown Prince and the Prince of Qi was arranged for early the next morning. His two brothers had to comply by leaving their residences for the palace. The opportunity for ambush that Li Shimin had sought but had failed to achieve had finally arrived. His loving father had become but a chess piece in his wider plan. How was Li Yuan to know that the most ambitious of his sons had made the uneasy decision to kill his own brothers? Great Hall with a heavy heart as he prepared to retire for the night. All the details of his meeting with Li Shimin are recorded in the Old Book of Tang. According to this book, the conversation was just between Li Yuan and Li Shimin. If there had been anyone else present, Li Shimin would probably not have suddenly revealed that the crown prince was having illicit relations with women of the harem. However, since no one else was present, it seems a little strange that the expressions on their faces and even the tears in Li Shimin's eyes are described in the historical record. 还有一个细节，就是通鉴里头记载，大概只有通鉴记载了，就是唐高祖的一个妃子啊，张婕妤啊，张婕妤事先知道了唐太宗、太宗的这一些计划，而且把这消息告诉了李建仓。Zhang was one of Li Yuan's favorites in his later years. And she was the concubine mentioned in the accusation Li Shimin secretly made to the emperor about the crown prince. Zhang Jianyu, 呢，呃，在这个太子之争的这个问题上是站在太子那边的，他是跟这个李建成那边的立场更接近。这其实不代表他一定是跟李李建成有私通，呃，这是这是两个概念。呃，这个张婕妤呢，她家里面曾经跟李世民。People in the Tang Dynasty had a tradition of compiling factual historical records of preceding regimes. We may never know how a concubine learned about the private conversation between Li Yuan and his son. And even more uncertain is its accuracy as described in the official history, and whether or not this description originated with this concubine. The one thing we do know for certain, this private meeting on the eve of the Xuan Wugate incident wasn't recorded until after Li Shimin had succeeded to the throne. In other words, the content of the private talk as we know it could only have been preserved with the approval of Li Shimin as Emperor Taizong. 
The true course and contents of the discussion could only be known to Li Shumin and his father. That night must have been a sleepless one for Li Yuan. He could never have imagined that when the sun rose in the morning, everything would be irreversibly changed. Shamin immediately rushed to Xuanwu Gate after leaving his father for a mysterious meeting. Without the assistance of a certain man, Li Shumin's entire plan would have collapsed. The Imperial Taiji Palace was divided into two parts. The Emperor dealt with government affairs in the southern part, where the halls for the ministers of each department were located. The Emperor's living quarters were located in the northern part. Xuanwu Gate was the most important gate on the northern side of the Imperial Palace, and it was closest to where the Emperor lived. Control of Xuanwu Gate was tantamount to control of the emperor. So the guards who kept watch over this critical entrance were the elite of the guards. Chang He, the general responsible for the guards at Xuanwu Gate, had once been an officer in the household of Li Shimin. But after Chang He became responsible for the security of the gate, the crown prince often sent people to befriend him. And he gradually became a trusted follower of the crown prince. At this crucial moment, Li Shimin was able to quickly persuade Chang He to play an important role in his game of chess. Li Jiangcheng could never have imagined that the guard at Xuanwu Gate he had befriended could so easily be turned by Li Shimin. Nor could he have imagined that an unassuming gatekeeper would be the key to his downfall. In this final step in preparation, Chang He quickly made a very smart decision. His part in making Li Shimin emperor would be priceless political capital for him in the future. Li Shimin outsmarted all the others. His excellent understanding of human nature enabled him to get the key figures to help at the crucial moment, some wittingly, some not. All the elements of his plan were in place, waiting for the easy prey. Li Shimin had long dreamed of becoming emperor. He was getting closer and closer to realizing his dream. <laughs> when Li Shimin returned to his residence after leaving Xuanwu Gate, everyone was anxiously waiting for him. He quickly described to his close aides the incredible events that had just unfolded. The next step 
was to devise the plot that would change the destiny of everyone involved, not to mention the entire Tang dynasty. This map shows that the Eastern Palace of Crown Prince Li Jiancheng and Wudu Palace of Li Yuanji were both on the east side of the Imperial City. But Tang Dynasty regulations forbade the princes from entering the harem section. Therefore, for Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji to enter the harem section, they had to leave the Imperial City through the northern gate of their respective residences. They then had to turn west to enter the north gate of the Imperial City. Li Xiumin believed that Li Jiancheng would be in such a hurry to enter the palace that he would enter Xuanwu Gate, which was closest to his residence. Palace regulations forbade weapons to be carried into the Imperial City. In fact, even the palace gatekeepers were not permitted to enter the palace bearing arms. For this reason, Li Xiumin believed that the small group of trees outside Xuanwu Gate was perfect for an ambush. Ever since he mobilized an army at Taiwan, Li Xiumin had constantly been dreaming of becoming emperor. This was the closest he'd ever been to realizing that dream. We have no way of knowing what he was actually thinking at that time, but thoughts of power, familial relations and hate were no doubt running through his mind. Whatever he was thinking, the plot had reached the point of no return. already late, but Crown Prince Li Jiancheng was still up. He received word that the Emperor wanted to see him in the morning. He most likely believed it to be a routine meeting. After all, because of the droughts that year, requests for aid were coming in from all over the nation. Thus, Li Jiancheng was busy finishing his official business before that meeting with his father. He may well have forgotten the treachery that he had seen in the past in Li Shimin's conniving eyes. Then, an unexpected figure suddenly arrived with startling news. The mysterious and unexpected visitor was the servant of Zhang the concubine. He reported to Li Jiancheng about the accusation that Li Shimin had made to the emperor. He now knew that the emperor had summoned them to get to the truth of the matter. Li Jiancheng now had a valuable opportunity to create a turning point in history. It appears that Li Jiancheng didn't appreciate the seriousness of the situation. The first person he contacted with the news was his younger brother, Li Yuanji. Li Jiancheng told him about Li Shimin's accusation and that they were ordered to meet with the emperor the next morning. Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji have a difference between this situation. 李建成因为有杨生蛋事件的先例，他说只要我跑到父亲面前，奋不顾身地扑倒在地，然后痛哭流涕，父亲就可以原谅我，而且态度是第一位的。李元吉他的想法就多一点，他说这事儿没有那么简单，我们应该乐兵不动，就是我们的实力才是最重要的，我们态度不是最重要的。李建成 ordered Li Yuanji not to jump the gun, because the palace guards were all loyal. 
The Shomi, meanwhile, had few loyal troops, so there was apparently no need for a large guard contingent to accompany them. The UNG, however, apparently sensed mortal danger. Auntie couldn't persuade his elder brother. Ignoring the advice of his trusted younger brother, Li Jiancheng again missed an opportunity to change his destiny. Destiny played a joke on Li Jiancheng. The kind of extreme solution he had eschewed on several occasions was now the only option left for Li Shumin. He would now gamble on the very type of act that the Crown Prince had always avoided. It was approaching daybreak, and the only sounds in the courtyard of the Crown Prince's palace was the buzzing of a few insects. A major turning point in the destiny of the Crown Prince of the Great Tan Dynasty was imminent. There are different interpretations of the Xuan Gate incident, so which issues are worth re-examining? What unexpected events nearly ruined Li Xiumin's plan to kill his brother and seize power? How are the Xuan Wu Gate incident and the Jin Guan rule related? In the next part, we'll look at the events directly leading to the Xuan Wu Gate incident and unlock some historical mysteries.